incredible woman. And, uh, and I don't care if she's a Democrat or a Republican. I just think it's very important that we keep her here and healthy, and she, she will take care of whoever she has to take care of. And it's an honor to see you, and I really appreciate it. If you'd like to say a couple of words, Karen, please. Well, thank you, Mr. President. It's just an honor and a pleasure to be here and that you wanted to include me in this wonderful conversation. Um, I am truly honored and humbled to be before you right now to be able to discuss some of the issues that, that have transpired in my community. Um, I thank Dr. Carson for pointing out some of the most troubling things that we do have going on in the community, but you have started working on these things long before now. And I do, Mr. President, give you a lot of credit for that, and I thank you for it. Thank you. Um, we, we as a community have been struggling, and as you know, um, our poverty level is extremely high in the area, and everyone is not meant to go to college. So one of the things I would like to point out is that training is a necessity and a need, as John has mentioned. That is something that is imperative for the community. If we have proper training, then we can change our renters into homeowners. We can change the dynamic of my community that I have been in since 1969. And my husband and I, we grew up on the same street. We've been there since, like I said, 1969, and my in-laws still live a few doors down from me. And I know how great our community... Do you get along with them still? <laughs> yes, I still do. <laughs> I love my mother-in-law. One of the few. <laughs> Um, as I was saying, that it, it's imperative that I, that I know that our community can change. I know what it can go back to. I know how wonderful it was before, and I know what it can grow back into being. If we can turn renters into homeowners, if we can put the dollar back into the community, if we can change the lives of single mothers that are struggling to make ends meet, which we have been doing with, you know, food distribution, but food distribution is not the end all. We don't want to stay where people are asking for things constantly. We want people to be able to stand on their own two feet and be resilient within their own community and take pride in that, as well as being able to, you know, as you addressed about the historical black colleges, I would love to see a historical black college in the city of Detroit. I think that would be amazing, and I think you're just the president to be able to make that happen. It's an interesting idea, actually. I think that you can. And they've got a lot of money now. I They're think all you, set. So I, I don't know. Well, maybe we can uh, work something out. I think you can we'll make talk that about happen. that. I would love to talk we'll about talk that. Talk about that. Thanks, um, also, funding for home repairs for our seniors. Um, our seniors are really struggling, and everyone does not have children. Everyone does not have a spouse, and they don't have family they can count on. So our seniors are suffering because they do not have money for repairs for their roofs, for ramps and for their porches. And it's something extremely important to them and to be able to maintain, as you know, to be able to maintain seniors in their homes is life changing. I mean, we have programs that assist, but we don't have programs that address, directly address this within a community to be able to empower seniors to stay in their homes. And I think we can make a whole world of difference by doing that. Um, and you've considered everything else that I wanted to talk about. No, but I think your idea about historically black colleges, universities coming here, one real good one. Yes. I think it's a great idea. Thank you. With all you said, that really, uh, I remember everything you said word for word. But you know what? That was a, an idea I hadn't heard of. I don't know if anyone's ever thought of that. But, John, you want to start working on that, please? Absolutely. Isn't that a good idea? That's a great idea, and I okay, have a couple so ideas of exactly where to put it, Karen. I don't know. Thank that you. might have been a filler for you. It might have been just a filler, but it wasn't a filler up here. No, that, it's not, that's a, a, it's great, not a filler. It's we're, not a we're filler. We're going to have John James work on it. If John works on it, I'll bet you it happens. Oh, okay? I know it'll happen. I mean, John James is the man to make that happen. We've been working really great together, and good. I'm looking forward to continue good. working with you and the White House good. to be able to continue. And Jerron has been awesome to work with. Good. So say I hello thank to you. you. Say hello to your husband. I will. He's actually in the car. <laughs> oh, he's in the car. Can we bring him in, please? Is he all right? I mean, why is he in the car? Because Can't the... make it, Scott? You mean he doesn't qualify? Would you do me a favor? Could you have somebody go out and find him, take his car, let him come in? He only saved your life, right? <laughs> he only saved my she life. She was not feeling too well one night, and she said, would you do me a favor? Go down to the store and get a particular thing. And uh, that was a big that was a big evening. No, he does not deserve to be sitting in a car. Let's bring him in, okay? No, and I also took a note from you, and so I actually filed a lawsuit to the governor today as well. So okay, I thought good. that you would like to know that. That sounds very good. You got my note, right? Yes, I did. Good. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Great job. Uh, Scott, could you say a few words, please? Outstanding guy. Yes, sir. Uh, thank you, Mr. President.